Reba McIntyre was born in McAllister, Oklahoma, in 1955, 8, but was raised on a ranch in Chalky, Oklahoma. She was the third of four children born to Clark and Jacqueline McIntyre. Her grandfather, John Wesley McIntyre, was a world champion steer roper in 1934, while her father held the same title three times. Jacqueline McIntyre had aspirations of becoming a country singer, but instead became a public school teacher, librarian and secretary. While her mother was tender and loving, her father had trouble showing affection. When we were growing up I used to regret that daddy never told us that he loved us, she recalled in her autobiography. The McIntyre family owned a cattle ranch in Chalky. Each family member contributed to running the cattle operation. The McIntyre children helped with ranch chores before and after school. This included castrating bulls and giving them worm medicine. The McIntyre siblings also developed an interest in singing, which was encouraged by their mother. On car trips to their father's rodeo dates, Jacqueline McIntyre taught her children to sing in harmony with one another. Young Reba then started performing at school, beginning in first grade when she sang away in a manger at an elementary school Christmas pageant. By high school the McIntyre siblings had been frequently performing. Together, they formed a trio which they called the Singing McIntyres. In 1971, the trio released a single about their famous grandfather called The Ballad of John McIntyre. It was pressed as a single by a local label and was issued in small numbers regionally. The trio eventually included a backing band which performed at local functions. The group was later named the Kiowa High School Cowboy Band. They also had paying gigs at bars at dance halls in nearby Oklahoma City. In 1973, McIntyre graduated from Kiowa High School. In March 1975 and accompanied by her mother, McIntyre embarked on a trip to Nashville, Tennessee, to record a demonstration tape that Stiegel hoped to pass along to record labels. Reba McIntyre made a fortune for herself through a career in the music industry and as an actress. In 1989, McIntyre married her manager, Narvel Blackstock. The country star's fans were stunned to discover that after 26 years of marriage, Blackstock and McIntyre were headed for divorce. The settlement cost McIntyre a whopping $47.5 million due to her professional ties with her husband. McIntyre was blindsided by her husband's divorce filing admitting that the divorce was not her idea. Not only did she lose her husband, her business partner, and her friend, but she also lost millions of her hard-earned money. It was difficult for her to go through, but she had a great support system, including her staff, her friends, and her family. More importantly, she had her faith to lean on. Every day, McIntyre prayed for the strength to move on and she admits, her faith was what kept her from breaking. She shared. Without faith, I don't know what I would have done. I guess I would have been a puddle on the floor. You've got to have somebody to talk to. And God is my therapist and best friend. I love the Lord with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. To McIntyre, faith became the most important part of her life. She starts and ends each day with God, and she allows him to guide her throughout her entire day. Eventually, McIntyre was able to move on from her failed marriage. She found love again with her friend Rex Lynn, whom she now considers one of her greatest loves. Like Reba McIntyre, there are many other celebrities who put their faith in God at the center of their being. When Denzel Washington was invited to speak at a Dillard University graduation, he spoke about how God influenced everything in his life. Put God first in everything you do, he told the graduating class.
He went on to say that everything he has in his life, from his accomplishments to his material possessions, all these are with him by the grace of God. When Washington's mother died in 2021 amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, the actor made a promise to her and to God that he would do good and honor his parents with the way he lived. His mom played a great part in Washington's life. When he was younger, he would sit in his mom's beauty shop and spend hours there. One day in 1975, a woman by the name of Ruth Green was looking at him through the mirror. She kept staring at him, no matter how many times he looked away. After a while, the woman asked for a piece of paper and scribbled the numbers 1975 and 28 along with the word prophecy. Boy, you're going to travel the world, and you're going to speak to millions of people, the woman told him then. Angry at the subsequent miscarriages she went through, Underwood asked God to either shut the door or allow her to have a child. The woman turned out to be one of the oldest church members in their town with a known gift of prophecy. She was right to say that one day, Washington would be an influential force in the world, one that spoke to millions of people not only through his craft but with his philanthropic work. Washington also revealed that the number 28 held significance in his life. He was born on the 28th, and so were his wife and first son. 2017 was a difficult year for Carrie Underwood, who realized her life wasn't going according to plan. Her goals that year were simple, to make new music and to have a baby. That year, until early 2018, Underwood suffered three painful miscarriages that got her questioning God's plan for her. She drowned herself in work, trying to forget about the difficult things happening behind the scenes. At the time, Underwood was afraid to be angry at God. After all, she had a wonderful life, a successful career, a wonderful husband, friends, and a beautiful child named Isaiah. Until one day, she finally got mad. She thought she was going through another miscarriage, and she prayed to God. She curled up next to her son and began to sob. Why on earth do I keep getting pregnant if I can't have a kid? She cried out, angry at the subsequent miscarriages she went through. Underwood asked God to either shut the door or allow her to have a child. For the first time, she finally let God in on her thoughts. Two days later, she went to the doctor, preparing herself for news of another miscarriage. To her surprise, the doctors told her that her pregnancy was going great. It was then that she realized God heard her prayer. They named their son Jacob. Many consider the spiritual meaning of his name to be May God Protect. Their eldest, Isaiah, reminds them to pray together as a family every day. Their family constantly has open conversations about God, to the point that Isaiah once told her that he needed to love God more than Underwood loved God. More and more celebrities have been vocal about their spiritual journeys. Patrick Cassidy's son, Jack Cassidy, once opened up about how he cried out to God amidst the total darkness he felt after losing in the voice and his addiction struggles. Chúng ta đã cùng nhau khám phá những câu chuyện thú vị và đáng chú ý về các ngôi sao hấp dẫn. Nếu bạn thích nội dung video của chúng tôi và muốn tiếp tục Nhận thông tin mới nhất về các ngôi sao, đừng quên đăng ký, like và để lại comment ở phần bình luận bên dưới. Chúng tôi rất trân trọng mọi ý kiến đóng góp của các bạn để cải thiện chất lượng nội dung trong tương lai. Hãy chia sẻ ý kiến hoặc gợi ý thắc mắc mà bạn có thể cho chúng tôi những thông tin chính xác hơn trong những video tiếp theo. Cảm ơn bạn đã dành thời gian theo dõi video này. 
Hãy nhấn like và để lại comment ngay bây giờ để chúng tôi biết rằng bạn đã thích nội dung này. Đừng quên subscribe kênh của chúng tôi để không bỏ lỡ bất kỳ thông tin hấp dẫn nào về các ngôi sao trong tương lai. Hẹn gặp lại các bạn trong những video tiếp theo. Chúc mọi người một ngày vui vẻ và thú vị.